What's up you guys, it's Levi here, the largest ATM provider in the United States. The bold next door was slammed with ransomware. It's too bad it wasn't malware that caused the ATMs to have money going and flying out of those ATMs. I'm sure if one of you guys walked by there and that was happening and there happened to be a like button on the side, you go ahead and smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm like you should be doing right now. Anyway, today I'm gonna to be talking about the top ransomware case of May of 2020 and this is what I'm going to be talking about. Um, I'm going to be talking about what happened and I'm going to be talking about what you guys can learn from this situation. I put a video out there on the top ransomware case each and every single month um, to increase the awareness of the ransomware cases that are going on out there so that you guys can realize ransomware is prevalent and anyone can get ransomware including you guys. And by watching these videos on a monthly basis, I'm hoping that you guys can learn from the successes of and the failures of the organizations that I talk about and be able to protect yourselves or your organizations from getting ransomware or being impacted by ransomware as badly than if you hadn't taken actions that we talk about in these videos. All right, so Bold Nextdorf, the largest ATM provider in the United States and also provide point of sale systems or what I like to call cash registers and some other software used by major retailers. Um, it owns about 35% of cash machines worldwide. So, you know, it's kind of a big deal. All right, so what happened in this situation? According to DeBold, on the evening of Saturday, April 25th, the company's security team discovered anonymous behavior on its corporate network. Suspecting a ransomware attack, DeBold said it immediately began disconnecting systems on that network to contain the spread of the malware. Sources told Krebs on security that DeBold's response affected services for over 100 of the company's customers. DeBold said the company's response to attack did disrupt a system that automates field service re technician requests, but that the incident did not affect customer networks or the general public. Uh, DeBold has determined that the spread of the malware has been contained. DeBold said in a written statement provided to you on Krebs Security, um, the incident did not affect ATMs, customer networks, or the general public, and its impact was not material to our business. Unfortunately, cybercrime is an ongoing challenge for all companies. DeBold Nextdorf takes the security of our systems and customer service very seriously. Our leadership has connected personally with customers to make them aware of the situation and how we addressed it. All right, so it seems like the main thing that was impacted was the field service request system, likely the system that keeps track of the repairs that need to be done on the ATMs or on the point of sale machines or the POS machines, also known as the cash registers. And the good thing is, is that the ATMs and the cash machines were not impacted None of the actual public networks were impacted, just the corporate network. So that was good because the main part of the business that makes the business money was still working. And that keeps the business running because without making money, a business cannot exist. So that's a good thing, right? All right, so some lessons that can be learned from this situation. If you have monitoring systems in place um, to be able to catch an incident like this and catch it right away and start disconnecting systems on your network before that ransomware spreads all over that network, um, it can make your life so, so much better, right? Like they were able to spread, they were able to keep it from spreading out to their whole network, impacting their ACMs and cash machines and things like that. Um, to the point it could have taken that business down for a long period of time where it just took down very minimal 
and the field service requests and things like that. So yeah, you can fix the machines, but hey, at least all of them weren't down at once. And it's way easier to recover a few subsets of machines than the entire network. So you have to make sure that you have systems in place to be able to detect these things as fast as possible and react and fix the problem as immediate as possible or stop the spread as immediate as possible. This Also, this case happened on a Saturday night and it's important that you have um, systems in place and personnel in place um, to be able to detect this stuff on the off hours, especially on Saturday nights, Friday nights. Um, those are very, very key times for ransomware pirates, what I like to call them, they're actually hackers, but I like to call them pirates, um, to deploy that ransomware out on networks because most organizations don't have a lot of IT people around at that time to be able to monitor the network and respond to the network. So then when the ransomware deploys on Saturday or Friday night, by Monday morning when the employees come in, boom, the network's been taken down and it's too late, right? Or if they see the incident, they have to take the time to get employees to come in if it's spreading too fast on the weekend, right? because they're not just all there. So yeah, it's extremely, extremely critical that you're having monitors, you're having monitoring in place and have the ability to respond during these off hours because that's the likely time that these incidents are going to happen. All right, so as you can see from this case and all other cases that we've talked about in the previous month, ransomware does not care where you're at, what type of organization or person that you are, or how big of a person or organization that you are. In this case, it impacted an organization that provides 35% of the world's cash machines worldwide. A huge, huge company. It's a really, really huge deal. 35% is a huge number, right? And if it can happen to them, it can happen to you, right? Um, so make sure that you're taking the steps that I'm gonna be talking about now to help protect yourselves. Number one, update all of your software and all of your hardware on a consistent basis. Um, don't be ignoring those Windows updates that you have, um, ignoring updates on your phone. Um, don't keep around old machines that you cannot update anymore. Um, be number two, be careful what you're opening in emails. Um, phishing is one of the most common ways that ransomware gets deployed across networks. Um, number three, have antivirus. Make sure you're keeping it up to date. Number four, uh, have a team watching security at all times and have the resources to be able to respond to those security incidents when they happen. Number five, make sure you're following the three, two, one backup strategy. Backups are essential for being able to protect yourselves from ransomware. So if you get ransomware, you restore from that backup. You don't have to pay the ransom or you don't have to lose all of your files. Backups are saviors. Make sure you have them. If you don't know what the 321 backup plan is, I'll post a video down below in the description. Check that out. Make sure you're implementing that. That is probably the biggest thing on this list, honestly. And number six, make sure that you're smashing that like button for the YouTube algorithm um, so more people can see this video and help protect themselves. If enough people smash that like button for the YouTube algorithm, um, this video will go viral and everyone will follow through the steps that I just talked about and hopefully ransomware will begin to die off because everybody's doing what they're supposed to be doing, right? So. Um, let me know if you guys have any questions or comments down below. I'd love to hear from you guys. Thank you for watching guys and have a fantastic day.